Hello, everyone, and welcome to the What's New for Mobile, uh, What's New for Mobile in Utah webinar. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow. And today we'll be covering a quick overview on all the things that are new to mobile in Utah. And I'll do a deep dive into some of the new features. And for some of the folks who stick around till the end, we'll definitely open up to some Q&A and answer any questions that come up along the way. Okay. Um, so here is the mobile platforms release highlights in a nutshell. You can see here that we've released some new features and updates for our clients like multi-instance switching, new out-of-the-box workflows like field service contractor and IT7 vendor mobile. And we've also updated some developer tools and platform capabilities like unified theming with next experience um, and online to offline mode transitioning. But instead of just talking you through each one of these feature by feature, I thought it would make a lot more sense to go through each of these updates layer by layer. Um, this is a more technical overview of what our platform has to offer as we dive into each one of our clients and platform capabilities. And at the end of this, you should be up to date um, on all the latest Utah features. But I think with this visual, it gives you a bit more clarity on what's being released and how it relates to the overall mobile platform. But just to set some context in case you're unfamiliar, what you're looking at is a diagram of our mobile platform. This is an overview of all the clients, workflows, and capabilities that it has to offer as of today. At the very top of our layer, we'll typically start with our end user workflows. Right? These are the out-of-the-box apps that our ServiceNow business units, they build and deliver to our customers. And customers will typically start here as well. Right, They'll check out what's available out of the box, and then they'll tweak them to their liking using our mobile developer tools. And these workflows are what populate our two native clients on the second layer, or what you might be more familiar with, ServiceNow Agent and the Now Mobile app. But it's important to understand that these two clients are really just empty containers. It's not really until you install an out-of-the-box plugin like ITSM Agent, uh, Field Service Mobile Agent, or the Employee Service Delivery app for Now Mobile, so that it then populates that data and content inside of those client containers. You know, when customers talk about ServiceNow Agent, they're likely talking about a workflow for ITSM Agent or Field Service, or maybe another workflow. When we're talking about Now Mobile, it's likely that you're using the employee service delivery workflow or for HR service delivery. And now mobile is the container for those experiences. Um, but you know, if there's any tweaking or um, customization that needs to be done, um, or maybe there's a completely new custom workflow that you wanna build, then you have the ability to use our mobile platforms developer tools and platform components. So, and you're able to use those to customize the, your solutions to whatever your business needs, right? And so this is where the third layer comes in. And this is where majority of new features will live in as well. It is the mobile capabilities and platform components that we're building for our ServiceNow business unit teams so that they can create better out of the box experiences for our mobile apps, um, as well as the developer tools that we continue to invest in every release so that your admins and citizens and developers can build better experiences much easier over time. And so this is a really great visual to help guide folks about you know, what we're talking about when we mention new client updates, new workflows, new developer tools, or even new mobile capabilities. So this is good to keep in mind as we go through this review, okay? So I like to start with this first layer here. Um, again, you have your end user workflows or what we commonly refer to as BU apps or business unit apps. Um, and these are all of the out-of-the-box BU apps that we have available as of today. Some apps are pre-existing, some are updated through the ServiceNow store, and some are just completely new. The important thing to understand here is that most customers will typically start with an out-of-the-box app as they're preparing to, uh, you know, they're preparing a mobile implementation and rollout. And depending on what products you're in entitled to on the platform, if there is a mobile experience for it, then that will automatically be available for you to use. So it's important that you know, you're making sure you're up to date uh, on the latest capabilities on the apps that you wanna roll out. With the Utah release, 
you can see that there's a couple new apps you can check out for filters contractor on the CSM side. And on the now mobile side, there's a new app for vendor management. For all the other updates happening in Utah, I think the biggest thing to note here is that majority of these apps were required to migrate away from using legacy components. So you have apps like ITSM Agent on the left side. That app used to use legacy item views and legacy item parameters within their workflows. Um, but they've since in Utah updated their apps to use cards and templates, input form screens, so that customers would be able to take advantage of the latest features and capabilities right out of the box. And there's a bit less confusion, you know, trying to intermingle all these legacy components with new features. Um, and so their apps should be latest as of Utah. And depending on what you're looking for, there should be a corresponding product doc page with more information in which you can find in their product docs. Um, and so you can also follow up with uh, those specific business units through your account team if you want to learn more information as well. Okay. Um, for a mobile agent, these are highlighting just some of the most common experiences that customers will start with when preparing for their rollout strategy. Customers will typically start with ITSM or field service as their starting point on agent. Um, they'll see what's available out of the box, and then you know they'll document what the gaps uh, that they have, which the apps don't provide them. And then they'll use mobile app builder to fill in those gaps, right? Whether it's a screen, it's a table, it's a function, it's a policy, all of that you would use mobile app builder to you know fill in um, whatever the out of the box doesn't provide you. On the now mobile side, customers typically start with the base system functionality when rolling out now mobile. Um, and that is the employee service delivery experience. This experience gives employees access to their tasks, requests, KB articles, catalog items, all that is available out of the box. And then you start to add other experiences to it, such as the new hire onboarding experience, right? All that can be added um, with Mobile App Builder. Um, but if there's any particular experience or persona that you want to check out, we likely have something available. If you download and install either one of the now mobile apps or agent clients in our app stores, you'll find a button at the bottom of the login screen that says try with a demo account. And when you tap on that button, you can actually launch into any one of these personas that you see here from the persona uh, employee persona to field service or something else. Um, and I do want to mention that these are just demo experiences. They're not actually reflective of what you will get out of the box. We'd advise if you're trying to learn more about any specific BU app that you actually get a personal developer instance and install the out of the box app to take a closer look, or you can get a demo directly from the BU teams themselves through your account team. Okay. But that pretty much wraps up the first layer in our platform deep dive for end user workflows. The second layer that I'll quickly go through are all the different clients. Um, so typically when customers deploy our mobile apps, they'll stick to using our public clients in the iOS app store and Google play store. And again, those two clients that we have are ServiceNow agent for the fulfiller and then now mobile for the employee. Um, but we also do offer public MAM or uh, mobile app management wrapped clients for Microsoft Intune and BlackBerry Dynamics. And these are really for customers who currently have app management capabilities um, through their MAM provider, and they would like to enforce their existing policies into their service download labs. For example, if a customer uses Microsoft Intune, then they can use their Azure account to manage their employees' devices and apps. And with some additional configurations, you know, they can do things like apply their Azure protection policies, or maybe they want to configure a default authentication browser for their ServiceNow mobile apps before they distribute to their end users. Okay, so that's what's available um, as well in the public app stores. Um, and then for this third solution, we also offer custom branded clients with mobile publishing. Mobile publishing is our premium offering that allows customers to build completely custom versions of our ServiceNow mobile apps. And it's often with their own branding. Um, and since this is a premium license offering, this usually will only apply to a small subset uh, of our customers. Um, and it's typically driven by two main use cases. The first main use case is that if you are a super brand conscious customer and you want to be able to have brand alignment, alignment between 
your platform experience and your mobile experience. Um, and you know, you, you've considered that mobile theming is not enough for you and that you need to have a custom app, uh, an app name under your app con, uh, app, your icon, um, uh, maybe even a custom loading splash screen, then you might want to consider going down this route. But this typically only applies to customers who already have a branded portal and they want that branding alignment with their mobile apps, right? And it's a huge requirement of yours to mask any branding that says ServiceNow on it um, and so that you can replace it with your own corporate identity, right? So it's very similar to a white label service. Okay, so that's the first main use case that might apply to you. The second main use case is this might apply to you if you are in need of full control on how you distribute your apps to your end users, whether through private distribution or public distribution. For whatever reason that you're not able to use our public apps in the app stores, then this will lead to a mobile publishing discussion. For private distribution, you might want to consider uh, when you want an unlisted app that is only discoverable through a direct link to your employees, or you might have a, you know, um, an EMM console that is remotely installing this app to your users' devices. From a management perspective, um, ServiceNow signs the app for you for private distribution. And then we also manage the submission and approval process for any private custom builds. But the distribution for private might be a bit more difficult to manage since you have to deal with VPP tokens or managing user redemption codes through those app stores, right? Apple and Android. Um, on the flip side, if you're a more experienced customer and you have a history of managing your, your own market-facing app store accounts, then you might want to, then you might choose public distribution instead, right? Um, in this case, um, this is for customers who want to be signers of their own app and you want full management of the approval process in which you have to do yourselves through your, your own app stores, right? ServiceNow doesn't really touch this at all. Uh, but of course, the benefit of public distribution is that you can build completely custom versions of our ServiceNow mobile apps that mask um, our branding with your own corporate identity. And you still have that app visible in the public app stores, which is so much more discoverable to your users and it's much easier to distribute to, right? Um, now, if this is all foreign to you and this doesn't make sense, we do have an in-depth mobile publishing FAQ that you can find on our mobile community site that will help, under, help you understand if mobile publishing is right for you or not. Um, and we've actually recently updated this for Utah. So if you have any questions around this, we highly recommend that you review our FAQs and videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, after re you review our FAQs and you still find that you're interested in this license offering, we recommend that you reach out to your account teams for more details. Okay, so that's mobile publishing. Um, moving on to the third and final layer of our mobile platform, it's all the individual capabilities, mobile components, and tooling that we build to enable our BU teams to build their mobile apps. And this is where most new features uh, for every release will live in as well. Um, but I like to typically start with our mobile developer tools first. These are all of our admin and developer tools that are available on the mobile platform today. It's always been a strategic initiative of ours to continue investing into our developer persona so that customers can more easier build, configure, and manage their service now mobile apps. You have Mobile App Builder, which is the configuration tool for you to build and configure your data, screens, and actions that make up all the workflows that live inside of your service now mobile apps, whether it's on Agent or now mobile. You also have Mobile Card Builder, which allows you to customize cards and templates to help visualize your ServiceNow record data, right? And this is all point and click tools. You don't actually have to go into the JSON and write JSON yourself. Um, you also have Mobile Publishing uh, to create custom versions of our ServiceNow mobile apps. Um, user Experience Analytics uh, provides you with out-of-the-box dashboards on your usage and adoption metrics. Very powerful tool. Um, and then with mobile SDK, this is a new project initiative of ours um, to give customers the ability to embed our service now workflows into your own customer apps. Um, and so that's an initiative that we're hoping to work uh, and invest in into the future. Um, but something to uh, highlight for Utah's release, we are deprecating mobile studio. 
Um, any new newly created Utah instance will automatically remove Studio from your instance. Um, if you happen to be an existing customer and you've you know been using Mobile Studio and still like using Mobile Studio, um, know that existing instances will continue to have access to Mobile Studio until they are upgraded to Utah and Vancouver. And we actually expect Mobile Studio to be fully deprecated by Washington's release. Um, just know that every configuration that you can do in Mobile Studio can be done in Mobile App Builder, and it should be much easier to do. You'll probably run into some gaps and confusion when you're actually trying to build stuff in Mobile Studio anyways. And so we're trying to save you that hassle of, you know, it's better to start using the right tool and build the right way. And so we highly recommend that you start with Mobile App Builder for any configuration. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, the biggest update that we have for Mobile App Builder in Utah is it is now adding configuration support for all platform components up until Tokyo. So since our release of Mobile App Builder just a year and a half ago, we've made tremendous progress. As you're seeing with each release, we're getting closer and closer to full plat platform parity with Mobile App Builder. This means any mobile feature up until Tokyo uh, that was configurable on the now platform, all that is now accessible inside of the App Builder. Features that came in Tokyo, like our map screen enhancements and maybe new input form screen features, all those configurations are available inside of Mobile App Builder. And we've also added... Uh, the new Utah feature for universal theming support, that is also configurable inside of App Builder with this latest version as well. Okay. <clears throat> Mobile Card Builder version 21.6. Um, with this latest version, we're making UI rules much easier to configure on your mobile cards using condition builders. Um, you no longer have to write out text values and look through product docs for definitions to understand how to use this all. It's now a lot more intuitive with simple point and click tools um, and, and condition builders. Um, and you can actually see all the available options as you're building them out, right? And we've also improved the quality of card previews, which are now much more representative of the type of cards that you view on your mobile device. Uh, before, it was kind of this low-fi res picture that didn't really say much about what those cards are. And so basically, We've enhanced it so it's much easier for you to find your cards. And we've added descriptions to them so that you can read what each card is used for. Okay. Um, and then lastly, we've also added support for date time fields using UI rules, as well as text decorators when applying your UI rules to cards. This was actually a previous gap from using our legacy UI styles. Um, so we've now covered that gap, and you should be able to do those two things much easier uh, through UI role condition builders. Okay. Um, mobile publishing version 3.2. This is a minor release uh, enhancement, I'm sorry, uh, that we've added to support for configuring themes that align with next experience themes and the latest mobile publishing builds. So this was enhanced to support our unifying mobile theming feature, which I'll speak to in just a few minutes. But with this enhancement, it's replacing old tables with new ones and making sure that your mobile experience will align with the rest of your platform's themes as you submit new build requests on mobile publishing. And uh, also, as of March 22nd, um, we've removed the capability to request onboarding builds from your mobile publishing forms. Um, and this is largely because mobile onboarding has now been deprecated and it's been removed from the public app store. So it doesn't make sense for you to submit new builds for onboarding, okay? Um, moving on to the remaining items in the final layer of our mobile platform, as well as the, 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 all the other Utah features as well. Um, these are the platform capabilities, um, and individual components that we build to enable our BU teams to build their apps, right? So this is typically the layer that we are talking about when we release new mobile features. Um, these are some of the pre-existing platform capabilities um, using screens, functions, and policies, and so many other components, right? Um, and these platform capabilities are what provide us, uh, th that allow us to do things like deeply integrate with other products, such as AI search, virtual agent, be able to deep link into third-party apps, 
Um, we can create more engaging experiences as well with our end users through features like theming, uh, campaigns and banners, or actual push notifications. And we continue to invest in building consumer grade UX experiences every release as well, so that you can build more branded and personalized mobile experiences for your users. Um, and so these are just some of the platform capability highlights that we have so far. Um, so here are the mobile platform capability improvements that we've invested into Utah. Um, so with the first being Next Experience Unified Theming across mobile and web, just to provide some context, um, this will greatly impact the employee experience on the now mobile app because it is a mobile workflow that was built using a combination of both native screens and web screens. Today, theming works really well on native screens, but as soon as you start driving a bit deeper into the catalog workflow, service uh, workflow, or maybe you've in, uh, you're have you now on the new employee sensor experience um, and you're using the support tab, you'll actually find yourself on some mobile web rendered view of service portal or employee center. Those web pages have their own theming applied with a separate set of configurations. And so it was very confusing trying to figure out how do, how do I apply theming to my mobile app? Um, I'm applying theming, but it's only applying to my native screens. Why is it not transitioning over to my web screens? Um, and so we wanted to create a more consistent experience across both native um, mobile uh, as well as web. And it, there really should only be one configuration that needs to be done to apply to both. And so with unified mobile theming, mobile will now inherit the theme colors from the next experience colors. So that when you apply your theming, it's reflective across both native and web. Um, so this will consolidate the configurations between the two experiences and it'll make it much easier for your admins to manage. Okay. Um, multi instance switching. So we're introducing multi instance switching in Utah, which will enable users to be able to log in multiple instances and switch between them without having to re log back in. Surprisingly, we found out that about 30% of ServiceNow customers use more than one instance. Um, and there are some who even have an instance for separate departments, such as IT versus HR. And as an end user, you know, you want to be able to receive notifications from both of them so that you can quickly take actions on them by just tapping on that notification. And so we've added that capability. If you have multiple instances logged in into on a single device, um, you'll be able to receive notifications across all those instances that you're logged into. Um, or maybe you are an admin user and you're testing mobile on multiple developer instances. You know, you're testing on a sub prod uh, or you have a developer instance and you want to be able to easily switch between instances without having to re-enter your credentials every single time. With this initial release, we're focused on improving the admin and developer experience so that you can save time um, switching between all those different environments when you're testing your mobile apps. Um, we're hoping to improve the end user experience uh, for folks who do have like multiple instances that is managed across different departments. If you have IT, HR, and you know so forth. Um, right now, the current experience is you know there's this button when you're in. Um, let me show you. Give it a second to load. You know, once you're inside of an instance, there's a couple ways to switch between the two. Um, give it a second to switch instances. But you know, one way is when you go to the settings tab, you can actually click on instances and that will allow you to switch between the two. Or the, there is that icon at the top left in which it will pull up this screen that will show you all your instances that you have access to. Now, as an end user, they might not know what an instance is or you might not even wanna show instance to that end user because you wanna hide that completely from them. Um, we don't quite have a great experience for that end user yet, but that's something that we're working on um, for the future, okay? Um, online to offline transitions. Um, this supports our ongoing initiative to deliver a best in-class field service management experience for our field service agents. In Utah, you have some major offline enhancements that will actually allow your agents to automatically switch between um, online mode to offline mode anytime that internet connection is lost. Prior to this, our offline solution was more of a preemptive approach, meaning you know agents would have to plan ahead of time 
uh, before they enter a remote site, and then they will have to manually switch their device into offline mode before they make any change or update uh, because they are scared of their uh, any saved updates from being lost, right? Uh, but you can see this video in the middle here. Um, I was able to reenact the device losing internet connection by going to airplane mode. And once that device loses internet, it will actually automatically switch into offline mode for you. And so that agent can continue working without any inter interruption whatsoever. They don't have to think about when their device is going to lose internet connection. It will automatically transition for them. Um, but once that internet, uh, once internet is detected again and you've reconnected, you'll get a notification at the top, which the agent can, can tap on. Uh, and it will allow them to sync all their changes that were made and during offline. And so it's uh, quite a huge upgrade since our last release of offline mode. Okay. Uh, these are just some additional features and enhancements that you might also want to make note of. Um, mobile deep link enhancements. Um, we now support the capability to deep link into launcher screens and input form screens. Prior to this, you're only able to link out to list and record screens. And so that's quite an improvement there. Um, record section function supports. Uh, we're now supporting the ability to build one or more functions triggered directly from your record UI section. So imagine having a really big button that you can tap directly from your record UI section, whether it lives on your home screen or it's on the related list. It just gives you the ability to reduce the number of taps that you need to take in order for that user to take action, okay? Uh, file upload enhancements for activity stream and input form screen. If you remember from our Topia release, we introduced the ability for users to upload multiple files and attachments directly to their activity stream. And with it, it came several improvements like um, an upload manager that gives you file details and reasons for why that your attachments might have failed, right? Um, any failed upload, it will give you details on, as well as support. Uh, it also supported the ability to upload upload any of those files while your app is in the background. Um, all of that was enhanced for Activity Stream in Tokyo. With Utah, we want to make sure that all those improvements also align with our uh, file upload experience for input form screens, because you can also attach attachments and files through an input form screen. So we want to make sure that that experience was aligned, whether you're uploading through input form screen or through activity stream. Um, all those improved behaviors and experiences will now be the same between the two, okay? Additional option for location tracking. This was a field service enhancement that introduces action-based tracking that will reduce the likelihood when agents forget to turn off and on location tracking. Um, they might, you know, turn on location tracking before starting work or on the other side, forgetting to turn off location tracking, which might drain their phone in the background. And it kind of puts their, uh, themselves, uh, their privacy at risk, uh, if they happen to be location tracking after work hours. And so this will kind of give you, uh, more control over that, right? Um, input form screen enhancements, um, this was a necessary improvement in order for our out-of-the-box apps to migrate off legacy tables like UI parameters and to transition those UI parameters over to using input form screens to take advantage of any latest features. And so with Utah, we are now supporting barcode and signature inputs on your input form screens. That was a previous gap, um, as well as support for parameter parameterized data items um, and which are commonly used for map screens and calendar screens, okay? Uh, and then lastly, we have mobile UI role enhancements. This was also another necessary improvement for our out-of-the-box apps to migrate off legacy tables for UI styles uh, and to be able to transition over uh, from those to using mobile UI rules. All the things that you could previously do using UI styles, such as time and go formatting, um, using record conditions, using fields beyond what exists on a card template and supporting JavaScript conditions, all of that is now supported uh, for mobile UI rules. And so at this point, there should no longer be any gaps um, or 
and it shouldn't provide you with any reason to use any of those legacy tables anymore. Okay. Uh, we should now have full capability to migrate over to using the latest cards and templates and all the new supporting features like UI rules and input form screens. Okay. Uh, so not, I know that was a lot, um, but that pretty much wraps up our mobile highlights for Utah. And before we wrap up, I want to point you to some of the resources that you can take advantage of to get started with your Utah implementations. Um, if there's any specific feature that you want to learn more about, please check out our mobile release notes for Utah. And for any other app outside of our mobile platform, you can find in their corresponding product documentation. Um, next, we have the Now Learning site. This really covers mobile fundamentals for mobile if you're completely new and looking to get more hands-on training using Mobile App Builder. Um, there's also a course on Now Learning called Mobile Additional Resources, and that actually pulls together all the courses that are available in Now Learning that is related to mobile. So definitely a great resource to have. Um, we also have Mobile Community. Um, this is a great online forum where you can access our mobile FAQs, find latest updates or announcements on mobile, or just really ask any open-ended mobile question around your implementation. Our internal mobile teams monitor this too, so this is a great place to share feedback, specifically on our idea portal. So as you go through your implementations, feel free to share any feedback or have or send any questions that you might have um, our way. Um, mobile App Academy. Uh, lastly, we have this how-to app building series that we host once a month on YouTube called Mobile App Academy. This is our how-to configuration series where we show you the fundamentals of using Mobile App Builder and how you can customize and extend your mobile workflows using our platform concepts. Uh, we do deep dives and show you best practices on how to configure key features and answer any questions that we see reoccurring on mobile community. So this is definitely a great session that you want to register to if you want deeper knowledge on how to implement and deploy your service now mobile apps. Okay. That pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to cover for today. Um, thank you all for joining us and thanks for um, letting me know of all your questions. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, but again, uh, thank you all for joining us today and I hope to see you in maybe a mobile app academy or if you happen to be joining us for knowledge, um, uh, our mobile team will be there as well. So feel free to come out, reach out and feel free to reach out to us. Thank you everyone and hope you have a great uh, morning, afternoon and evening. Cheers.